Hi everyone, this is Jim. Welcome to this uh, Blitz Chess postmortem. This is a postmortem of my game number 243. <clears throat> I was uh, black here and we got off a typical e4, e5 game, at least for the first few moves. Knight f3, knight c6. And now uh, typical moves here. Here, let's put up the opening book. The uh, <clears throat> bishop move. Bishop b5, the most popular the Spanish game. Bishop c4, the uh, <clears throat> Italian game. Bishop b5, bishop c4. And uh, d4, the scotch game, knight c3, the four knights. But my opponent played d3. So um, this is a very quiet move. It doesn't really um, <clears throat> offer very much for white in terms of an advantage. In fact, it's uh, pretty much equal. Uh, white has blocked in his own bishop. But he's uh, made this pawn on uh, e4 quite solid. So uh, we're out of the opening book at this point. A pretty quick exit from the opening book. Um, knight f6 maybe is a logical move, but h6 has its points too, which is uh, I'm going to play knight f6 and I just want to avoid the pin. Um, and the reason why I want to worry about the pin now is because I'm planning to uh, develop my bishop outside the pawn chain to uh, c5 or uh, b4. And, uh, and so it won't be available to uh, break the pin against the knight, so that's why I play h6 here. So my opponent plays c4, setting up this uh, pawn triangle. I go knight f6, knight c3, and bishop c5. And uh, right here there's a little tactic that uh, <clears throat> something you should always be aware of when you place your bishop uh, next to the pawn but one square apart. And that is uh, that pawn can be taken <laughs> because when you take back the move d4 forks the... Uh, the bishop and the knight. So this trick works with the the um, king pawn because the um, the queen's pawn is the one supported by the queen that's going to come forward and fork those pieces. So it's whenever you have the the bishop and the uh, <coughs> pawn next to each other. Now this isn't necessarily uh, a winning advantage. Um, the game might continue. Uh, let's see. The engine recommends bishop b4, just stepping away from this and. Uh, letting him capture this way, and then knight takes e4. So the material stays even. Um, it just kind of uh, produces a different structure here. There's uh, three pawns against four and four pawns against three, and there's an advanced uh, e pawn that maybe will become a target, and I have a, a knight that's a little bit misplaced. It'll probably get kicked around, so I'll waste some tempo with that. And, you know, uh, the chess engine gives a very slight advantage to white in this position. So not something to be greatly feared, but <clears throat> just something to keep in mind whenever you put your bishop out here that uh, your opponent may have this trick, and there may be cases where it actually wins material. So just to be aware of it. Um, so h3 was played, and uh, now I play a really silly move. <laughs> the knight was doing a job here on c6. In fact, it was placed there after my opponent played knight f3. I put the knight on c6 to defend the e-pawn. And uh, without any prompting or provocation, I just moved the knight, <laughs> not bothering to defend this pawn. So my opponent was awake and noticed this, and so I've sacrificed a pawn here for uh, not much or any compensation. So, but I uh, wanted to play on. I mean, it's just a pawn, and it's a long game, and uh, lots of things can happen. So the game goes on. Bishop, uh, <clears throat> bishop e2. And c6, my plan is to play c6 and uh, d5 and try and open things up a bit. Um, this may not be objectively the best plan, uh, but I want to try and uh, create some open lines and, and complicate things. So um, it's maybe a good practical decision. So white castles, I go ahead with d5. And yeah, you'll see the uh, engine doesn't like it. Um, it thinks d4 is a good response here. So let's check this out. d4 kicking the bishop and um, say bishop d6. And then he takes with the c pawn and uh, takes with the e pawn. Knight takes, knight takes. Yeah, this is kind of the position I was imagining, although I was thinking uh, the pawn would be back here. So having having advanced the pawn to d4 is, uh, makes this a decent, a decent position for white. Um, but it's still just a pawn. Um, so the, <coughs> the value that uh, the chess engine placed on that move at this point is probably slightly exaggerated. Okay, so bishop d2 was played instead. And um, now I go bishop e6, just developing my pieces. 
and maybe in, in some future I might not wrong wrong place there uh, I might be able to grab this pawn uh, right now I can't because it's adequately defended it's defended by both the bishop and the knight and the pawn on d3 so the c4 pawn is not not yet uh, uh, subject to being taken or lost but uh, could happen later <clears throat> so a3 um, maybe that's a little bit of a time waste what does the engine say uh, yeah black should be playing a little more white white should be playing a little more actively with moves like queen c2 rook c1 or just taking on d5 and uh, <clears throat> figure uh, straightening out the situation in the center there resolving the situation in the center okay but a3 was played I go bishop d4 trying to get rid of this knight I was looking for tactical tricks because this is a loose knight here which you always have to keep your eye out on loose pieces and see if there's some tactic but I, I couldn't find one so just played this <clears throat> and after he threatens my bishop I figure it's a good idea to get rid of this knight which is putting pressure on the d-pawn in the center so I go ahead and take it now oh, the engine likes that bishop takes and then now, uh, having gotten rid of that knight, it says, oh, I should strike in the center and play d takes e4. Um, instead, I played knight to uh, g6, and uh, the engine really doesn't like this move. <laughs> so let's see, uh, what does the engine think here? c takes d5 is uh, what the engine is recommending, cd, and then e5. Okay, not taking back, but e5. So this is an interesting way to play. The knight has to move. And then uh, he can play the move d5 to support it, or rook c1, d4 rather. And uh, yeah, so he's sort of cemented his advantage here. He's got an advantage in space as well as an extra pawn now. So that's good for white. So that's why I guess um, I should have taken in this position rather than playing um, knight g6. In this position I should have taken the pawn first rather than moving the knight. So... Uh, Anyway, e5 was played right away, maybe with the similar idea. I, mean, I go knight d7, I'm attacking this pawn, and he can play d4. Ah, but the difference is now I have the move d takes c4, so I get, I get my pawn back. And, uh, well, white still has a space advantage, <clears throat> but at least I've uh, equalized the material, so, um, so I've improved my position a bit. Um, white continues with bishop d2, I go queen c7. And, you know, my idea is to get a rick on the C file opposite the queen. And uh, <laughs> he wasted some time with his bishop. And now the position is dead equal. Um, but uh, right here I'm threatening uh, knight takes pawn because knight takes, knight takes. He can't take back because of the pin on the queen, the rook. The knight taking will unmask a pin of the rook on this pawn. So uh, he spotted that and moved his queen aside, so now I can't take it. So I try and undermine the center with the move uh, c5. And uh, so we're in the range of equality here. Um, he played rook a to d1. Logical move. And now I grab in the center because I uh, just want to isolate this pawn here. And uh, he takes back with the bishop. And I grab this pawn. It's funny, I, so I was thinking I'm a pawn up here, um, but the engine still rates this as about even. Um, he played... So, okay, the game should have continued. Knight takes e5. Knight takes e5. And... Bishop takes? No. Queen to c3. Ah, this is the idea. So this is how uh, he gets... Uh, gets an advantage in spite of being a pawn down as he puts pressure on this knight. I don't really want to move the knight um, because I'm losing the g-pawn, so I have to defend it. And um, that that uh, creates a real weakness in my structure here. Queen to e3. So that would be an interesting way to play, and that, that would be uh, the best, best play for white in this position. So just um, completing the natural exchanges and then playing the move... Um, queen to c3 to take advantage of pressure on this uh, dark squared diagonal here with the dark squared bishop. So, um, and yeah, notice I my dark squared bishop has been traded off, so that's uh, <clears throat> that's an advantage um, white has in this position is the bishop pair. So instead of doing that, he played uh, bishop takes a7, and that's just losing. So there's there's a point I wanted to make here. You know, I, I was playing a game against a uh, as when I was a Class B player and I was playing a Class A player. And, uh, you know, I made some rook move to defend a pawn that I thought was under attack, like, like rook here. 
And so he asked me after the game why I'd bothered to do that. And I said, well, I didn't want to lose the pawn. And he pointed out that, well, you know, in this case, uh, there was another trick. It was after taking the pawn, I could move the rook here and then capture a pawn down here. So the pawn wasn't even hanging. So the idea of, um, you know, ignoring this threat on a7, I saw this pawn was hanging and playing a different move. The idea of ignoring this threat instead of uh, defending against it is that uh, if you defend against it, uh, you're wasting uh, a move. Uh, whereas if you don't defend, um, you have two benefits. You have, you have an extra move because <laughs> you're not wasting time defending a pawn that doesn't need defending. And if he does happen to take the pawn, then you win the piece. So you're not primarily doing this to trap the piece. That's just a pleasant side effect. The main reason for not defending that pawn, it's not to set a trap. It's actually just to conserve your own uh, development and uh, keep your pieces moving forward and rather than moving them backwards and being defensive. Um, and then it's just a nice side effect that occasionally your opponents will stumble into these traps. So basically uh, the game is over at this point. He tries to defend it, but there's just uh, no way. Um, <clears throat> he played uh, rip to c1, and, um, but he doesn't even have time to grab the pawn because I'm going to kick the queen. Oh, cancel that. He went to d1 and then defend the pawn. So the game continued. I think I'll just go through. I'm, I'm keeping an advantage throughout all of this. I'm just trading off pieces because I'm a piece up and uh, activating everything and you know trying to get something going against his king, which is the idea of uh, lining up the bishop and the queen like that. Maybe I can sacrifice here and get an attack against his king. But uh, he stops that with the trade, but I, and this is, works to my favor because I've got another... Um, <clears throat> I, I pick up another pawn, so a little more material. So I go knight d3 here, forking the two rooks, but actually he has a good reply here. Uh, I can't take the rook because my rook is hanging. So, so he saves himself from the fork by taking advantage of this pin. So I bring my other rook over. And then he plays rook a1. Nope, cancel that. He plays rook a1, just trying to get the rook out of there. I go back to e5, threatening uh, this fork here. Um, or just, just trying to get my um, <clears throat> knight to a better square. Actually, I wasn't threatening a fork. Not until he played rook e1. Now there's a fork. And then he went with his king to the f1 square. So here, rather than grabbing the knight... There were probably other mates that I missed along the way, but there's there's a mate in five here starting with queen h3, uh, which is kind of cute. So let's let's take a look at that. Queen h3, king can't go back this way, so he's forced to go to uh, this square. And now knight h2. Um, so the knight is covering these squares, and the rooks are covering uh, this whole file. So how does he stop mate? The king goes to e3. And I play queen e6 check. Okay, queen e4 <laughs> interposing. Now rook d3 check. And king f4. And uh, g5 mate. <laughs> so that's kind of a pretty mate. The queen cutting across here, the rook cutting across here, and the, the pawn delivering the mate. Okay, um, so I could have mated it that way. Uh, didn't, I didn't calculate that far ahead. And, well, I have a winning position here, so there's many ways to win. The mate I saw was this one, rook d2. It's a much simpler mate. He actually has to uh, give up the queen at this point. The engine is suggesting king g2 uh, or queen takes d2. Uh, either which uh, of those moves loses the queen. But if uh, white moves the queen aside, then it's uh, mate in one. And so this is the mate I saw. The queen checks, the knight covers the escape square, and the rook covers the other escape square. So... That's how the game ended. Kind of a cute mate. Hope you guys enjoyed that. Leave any comments you have in the section below, and I will see you again soon. Bye.